just need some gas. And that, son, is why you wear a kill switch. Well, it's a gorgeous day outside, and uh, I just want to show you what I picked up. But y'all know I have a 24-foot bay boat. This is not a brand new boat. I bought this pre-owned. I did a bunch of looking and searching around. I think boat prices are absolutely ridiculous these days. Fixed it up the way I liked, repowered it, and that's a solid boat. You see me catch a lot of fish on it. But I wanted something that I could go out and do some different types of fishing in and hunting. So I picked up a used 14 foot John boat. I looked around for a used engine, couldn't find one that I wanted to spend the money on or one that was in good shape. So I actually went out and bought one. And that's what we're gonna to do today is unbox this new engine and put it on this John boat. But there it is, this is a Mercury 25 horsepower, which these 25 horsepowers are actually made by Tahatsu for Mercury. I'm not mistaken, but this was a this was the best deal I could find. Got it for a good price, and this isn't sponsored by Mercury nor Yamaha. I do not have an engine sponsor. This is what I spend my own money on. So let's go ahead and open this box up. My brother got me this Chris Reeve knife for Christmas. Titanium and really nice knife, so <laughs> we get to use it today. Oh, I think these engines weigh about 125 pounds. I may be mistaken. So if you ever buy one of these small mercury outboards, oh crap, it came with a uh, gas tank. Okay, I ended up buying one. And so I may return that one I bought, save some money. But anyway, if you ever buy one of these small mercuries, at least, it does not come with a prop. And I can understand that because they don't really know, props are so particular to the type of boat that you have. But this is actually my first Mercury I have ever owned. I think we're in modern times now where pretty much any manufacturer can be good. And each one of them have their own quirks and issues as well, depending on the model. So these small horsepowers, it's pretty much fine availability and best price. Like I mentioned, these are made by Tahatsu for Mercury. Because this is a four stroke, not a two stroke, so you have to add oil in the reservoir and then run it off a of regular gasoline. I may call my brother down to come and help me because I don't want to hurt my back that's already hurt. So let me call him. Okay, we got it on with help of my brother Amber. Oh, that thing looks good. So they call these portable engines. All it is is a clamp and then you tighten those clamps down and hook up to your gas. So one of the things you wanna make sure about is that you check your transom and measure it before you purchase an engine from anywhere. This is a 15 inch transom from the drain plug or the very bottom to the top. And this is a 15 inch shaft outboard. There we go, this tells me the propeller size diameter and pitch. That was pretty easy. All I'm gonna do is tighten these down. These are the clamps. Tighten these screws down, very easy. All right, those are tight. We need to add the mounting bolts, the hardware. And that means we're gonna have to drill through our transom because the holes on here that were previously in there or for a different model engine, and so they don't line up with these holes. Now we have our transom bolt, and then we need the two washers and the locking nut. There we go. Because there is wood inside this aluminum. And if you get any water in wood, it's gonna rot. So add some sealant, it doesn't have to be pretty. And I wanna do the same thing on this back side. Make sure not to get any on your threads. And do the same thing on the other side. This engine did come with a fuel tank, so you don't have to buy one separate like I did. I'm gonna have to return that one because it was extra. But this is, uh, I believe, a six and a half gallon tank. So here's your fuel line. It's pretty easy to set up. It can only, it can practically only go one way. But you always want to look on your primer bulb, and there's an arrow on there. You want the arrow facing the hose that's going to your engine. So this is our fuel hookup got a little push button, plastic push button, that should just clip in. 
tug on it a little bit, that's good to go. Now we're gonna take our other one, make sure it's not kinked or anything. And see, this one has a weird little connection on there, like a vent, kinda. And that one plugs right into this hose coming from the fuel tank. It's easy, it's plug and play. Push it in, and make sure it ain't going anywhere. Pull on a little bit, that's good to go. Fuel line's hooked up. Slide right off. Boom, there we go. Now this came with oil. This is a four stroke engine, so you don't pre-mix your fuel. You use regular gasoline, and then you add oil into the oil reservoir. It also has an oil filter. It comes with 10W30 oil, and on page 23 of the owner's manual, it says 1.4 liters, which in this case, one and a half quarts, and that's what it came with exactly was one and a half quarts. Almost like they know what you need. <laughs> so we're going to slap some oil in there. Your oil fill is right here, and then this is your dipstick for the oil. Like I said, it comes empty. Let's go ahead, put a funnel in there, and add that oil. There we go. And then you want to give it a few minutes for it to settle in and then you can check the level on the dipstick. Now what I want to do before I replace this cowling back on, I'm going to spray it with some corrosion protection. And this is just some Bow Shield T9. There's a whole bunch of different stuff you can use, but I want to coat this entire engine, especially being in salt water all the time. It's a very harsh environment and you're not going to protect it forever, but whatever you can do to prolong the breakdown and corrosion of the bolts and the head and everything else on this engine, the better. So spray it with something like this Boshiel T9. It's perfectly safe for all these from what I've been told. Now obviously do your own research. I need to see if there's oil in here. I assume there is, but you never want to assume things when it comes to stuff like this. Right, I got a big flat head for this bottom one. I just want to see a drop. That's all I need to see. If there's not a drop, I got to go and grab some lower unit. Here, oil. Okay, cool. There's oil in there. Pretty much all I have left on this John boat is to install the hub kit and prop, get some gas in it, and, and go run it. So I need to grease this prop shaft up. And I got the number 28 prop installation kit by the uh, turning point propellers so and then there's a turning point propeller this is a 10 and 3 8 inch by 13 pitch prop but just enough to keep it covered so we're going to pop this joker down in there if you can see inside the prop there's three notches on this hub and then there's and then those just slide in and match right up so you don't even need a press it's a small props so just take your hands and push that in and see how it sits nice and flush. I'm going to put some grease down in there as well and get that installed. So you have a thrust washer, which is going to go on first in that orientation, just like that. Then the prop will go on. Then you add that spacer on the prop, your washer, castle nut, and cotter pin. It's real easy. If you ever service it yourself just remember the way you took things off to put it back the same way make sure the side with the gap goes down first and now our propeller with the hub kit installed make sure those splines light up add our spacer that came with the hub kit make sure that lines up good and then a washer our castle nut now you don't want this super tight, but you do want it snug. And we're gonna throw that new anode on there. Pop the new one that's, that's offset a little bit to the back to prevent the prop from hitting it. See, now our prop is clearing it, that's good. I guess that's why it came with one. I believe this is a three quarter, and it is. Look at that. We're gonna snug it down with the socket wrench. You're not talking about putting a breaker bar on here and getting a lot of torque. You just want it tight but to where it freely spins without binding up. Just get that castle nut lined up with that hole, stick your cotter pin in there, and that's gonna prevent your nut from backing out. We're hooked up and ready to go to the boat ramp. Well, I guess ready to go to the gas station and then the boat ramp. Y'all come join along. I hope you're enjoying this so far. This is actually pretty fun being able to share the install and maiden voyage with y'all.
show up to the launch here. Orange Beach is a big boat launch. It actually cost $17 million to build. Last year was the first year it was open. I mean, it's big and it's busy too. I've seen it packed. I've had to park all the way up here before, but at least it can sustain all the boat parking. I need to get my dock line ready. I'm just going to keep one on the bow. Need my life jacket. Anytime you're launching a boat, you never want to forget to put the plug in. And the plug, <laughs> I gotta remember where I put it. There it is. We have our safety gear already in the boat. And now all I gotta do is undo that ratchet strap. Now, what I want to do, since this is our first time filling up the boat and actually using it, filling up the tank, we need to prep our primer bulb so we can actually get fuel going to the engine itself. So, all you do is squeeze it. Until it gets firm and it should get firm and then you're good you also while you're doing that want to make sure all your connections are good I have no leaking fuel there nothing leaking there we're good to go it's actually it's actually my first time stepping foot in it so I'm gonna throw our life jacket on and get this thing cranked up I just need some gas. Come on. Oh, there we go. It just needed a few starts, a few pulls since it's brand new. Sweet. It's pretty quiet. Pretty quiet. Spitting water, that's good. Cool. It just needed a few pulls since it's brand new engine needed the gas to get pulled in the injectors and cranked right up sweet i'm gonna untie us and go park us off the ramp <laughs> nice breaking in a brand new engine getting used to it a <laughs> little bit different than my bay boat <laughs> yeah that's me oh that's awesome man <laughs> just now like past week I've been putting it together so it's uh getting used to it <laughs> this is the first time I've launched it so yeah first time I've cranked it up it'll be a cool little hunting ring oh, yeah. yeah man you as well bro I think I like sitting on this side a little better to be honest definitely has some power and it needs some needs a little bit of ballast up front that's why I moved this fuel tank up to the bow a little bit well I guess here goes nothing let's crank it up and go this is gonna be kind of crazy to be honest so pop in forward and call it good all right we're gonna get out of the no wake zone and see where we can open it up at Won't be a bad little hunting rig, an inshore rig. This is the long no wake zone by the wharf, and then we'll get out in the in the bay or the creeks and open it up some. Like as soon as you hit that throttle, you can feel it, feel that thrust. Cause this thing weighs like nothing. There's a nice enclosed bridge Viking behind of that. So a Whitacar, Sport Fisher, some Hatterses. Pretty much most of y'all know this, but you must have that kill switch attached. What happens if you fall out of the boat or fall, it pulls out right here and the engine automatically shuts off. Let's hope nothing bad happens. This is our maiden voyage. Hope I installed the prop right and everything good. Drain plug's good, no water's coming in. Let's give it, give it a go. I'm sure there's some break-in period 
needed, so I don't want to run it full throttle at first. And I definitely want to put some ballast up front, some weight. actually kind of fun to be honest now do i want to be in this when a big sport fish comes in no but we're on plane right now <laughs> this is kind of fun now do i want to be in real choppy water in this no but for just like small bodies of water creek and bass fishing i think it's pretty fun feels so weird all the water coming it feels weird with the water you can feel the water rushing under the hole oh, see it like that you gotta know which way to turn And that, son, is why you wear a kill switch. <laughs> That's why you wear a kill switch and a life jacket. <laughs> well, that wasn't exciting. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever been thrown out of a boat. <sighs> That's why you wear a life jacket, guys, and gals. And you wear that kill switch. Because if I wasn't, the boat would have kept on going and I would have been out here floating. That wouldn't have been fun because the water's cold. <sighs> okay, note to self, don't try to turn like that again. That was dumb. Whew. I threw myself out because, oh, and my glasses are gone. That sucks. Those are nice glasses too. Whew. Dang. Welp. At least I got that on camera. Uh, that sucked. Real bad. Whew. But I've noticed myself was, it was canting like that and going to let a bunch of water in. So I immediately turned it the wrong way and that threw me out. And, uh, yeah went from there i am kind of irritated because i lost my nice glasses and at the same time <laughs> i did that that was that was not a very smart thing to do so i'm gonna go up on shallow water and try to regroup myself i can't believe uh can't believe that happened i can't wait to watch a replay and just see what happened thank you lord for watching over me on that one <laughs> at least the boat didn't sink and I'm gonna have to turn off my phone. Got wet. That sucked. Okay, let's crank it back up again.
Ooh, that was not fun at all. Hey, nobody is perfect, especially myself. And no matter how much you're on the water or around whatever you like doing, you never want to get complacent and you always want to make sure you're doing the right thing, like wearing a life jacket, wearing that kill switch. Because the moment you don't, something like that will happen and it's possible, you know, that water's freezing. And when you get thrown out like that, which I've never been thrown out of boat before like that, <clears throat> but you kind of are disoriented. Like you look up and, or you don't know which way's up, don't know which way's down. And that cold water shocks you. So life jacket saved my life. That's why you want to wear it as much as you can or pretty much every time, especially in something like this. Well, lesson learned. Thank you, Lord, first most for watching over me during that scenario. And uh, that's where it happened right here, right off the channel marker. Making my way back to the boat ramp. It, ju it just needs some ballast up on the front. It needs some, needs some weight. Oh, Lord, I hope that boat freaking slows down up there if not i'm going in again that is a big yacht coming quick we have a coast guard cutter coming by we just got back to the boat launch Woo! that was a trip of a lifetime i tell you that not in a good way, but lesson learned. Woo. Lesson learned for sure. At least it runs <laughs> and I didn't sink it. I thought for sure the boat was going down too, but in neutral, that's in neutral or zero throttle. Lanyards attached there. Please primer bulb and one, two, what the heck? Three, four. Okay, four pulls. That's oh, not too bad. Loaded on the trailer, y'all. What an eventful, eventful trip. I tell you that. I tell you that. Not what I expected, but at least. I had the proper safety equipment on. And I thought I lost my hat, but I just put my hat in the safety box. So that's good. Not my hat. But let's get her on the boat trailer. Okay. It's on there. The engine's off. Let's pull it up. Get the ratchet strap on there and i'm gonna call it a day <laughs> y'all i appreciate you for watching and staying tuned i would have never thought that would have happened today but you but i don't care how long you're on the water or flying or or driving or anything no matter what something can always happen when you least expect it like that so thank you lord for me still being alive and be able to make it back home and to the boat ramp i appreciate y'all for watching don't forget to go smash that subscribe button down below we'll get some fish on this boat it'll be fun and do some shrimping and everything else most importantly i want to thank the good lord up above for everything he does for us and we'll see you later